Check. T never never land. That's quite the contrast from Mr. Sandman. Well, I've hit the recording. I thought I was going to just maybe ease up in this today here at Real Liberty Media, but uh, I think I'm jumping in with both foot. One of them hobbled just a bit. Uh, I guess I'll talk about my visit with the doctor today. Pretty interesting visit. Uh, enjoyed that. It's the first time meeting that man. And I'm going to go over here uh, and tell you about today. Um, I didn't get it all lined up, but I never do. But today on American Dissonance, or make sure my mic's on. It is on. Yes, American Dissonance. We had no discord in this dissonance today. Uh, uh, the day after April Fool's. But it is a fringe, a fool's play today, and uh, a play. I got fringe. I came from that from uh, uh, a frill. I started out with the play on words, a frill, fool's play for April Fool's Day. I'd, I've been busy the last three days, and uh, as I said, I'd like to put a little more time in here. But I think I like what I've got, even if I am, if there is a little bit of discord in uh, on this uh, the frill of today. A fool's play. Well, yes, it uh, fringe a war of conscience. And there was a man. And I'm going to talk about Pistol Pete later today here in this broadcast. But I'm going to come through and, and bring you some of these uh, musings of the ponder gander uh, through the paraphrase plagiarist that, that I am. And this is a string. Well, you'll have to come back to the R log uh, blog, pa uh, blog page here for, for to get all the links when it's all said and done. Uh, Yes, said and done. Radio writing, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, more filling and or less filling. That is sounds great. Less filling. That's the tagline I was looking for. Well, all that is done is done with an eye for something else. So said Aristotle. Simply put, to understand the deed, look for the motive. I'm not innocent, but you are guilty. A little bit of justice is all we can afford. I'm not what you think I am. You are who I. Th you are who you think I am. Well, that's the way I put it. But this one fellow, Charles Horton Cooley, he said, uh, "I am not who you think I am. I am not who I think I am. I am who I think you think I am." Well, there's a lot to that, and. And into this fool's play. I've got this word in French uh, until tomorrow. So who am I today? But who will I be tomorrow? Because they say you're not who you say you are, but what you do. Well, I say that, but it's been said before. There's a backblast. Why seeketh thee vengeance, O man? With what purpose is it, thou, is it that thou pursuest it? Pursueth it. Thinketh thou to pain thy adversary? Know that thee thyself fillest its greatest torments. An old Egyptian said that long, long ago. Or so it was said, he said. There's a murder of crows. All the whole dark stormy parts with a long history of fear and loathing. And I remember back to fear and loathing left Las Vegas, but that's another story. And one to be expounded to upon next week. It's a system where the strong prey upon the weak. They think they come to judge guilt and innocent. In the end, they vote for the side with the better liar. Well, all eyes are upon you, and pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Free your mind. Remember what the Dormouse said, or go ask Alice. Thanks, Grimner and Moose Girl. A warning to unseen victims. The cake is a lie. A promise without any intent of delivery. I to the leavening. The le Let me see that again. I to the leavening. But here's yet in the world. Let me try one more time. Maybe if I spoke in a Scottish accent like an Irishman should. I to the leavening. But here's yet in the world. Hereafter the kneading, the making of the cake, the heating of the oven and the baking. Nay, you must stay the cooling too, or you may chance burn your lips. Even by the ocean, the cake is a lie. It's a real life fantasy. Keep on hoping. 
it'll keep you hopping. Who needs to be creative when there's so much to rip off? <laughs> A proverb says in the uh, interactions with people, you don't know, uh, in interactions with people you don't know well, you should have, you know, boy, can I talk today. <laughs> Ready, set, go. Proverb. In interactions with people you don't know well, you should behave with caution and avoid meddling in their affairs. Moose Girl highlighted me. Thank goodness somebody's... <laughs> Am I muted? No way. Really? Am I muted? Hello. Can you hear me? Are you kidding? <laughs> Am I? Tell me. Goodness. Can you hear me? Okay. Thank you, Grimner. You can hear me uh, in the uh, other channel. Thanks. Thanks, Rums. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. And I won't, uh, yes, I'll continue. Where was I? Uh, as I always am, rambling around. I'll just go right back to the proverb. In interactions with people you don't know well, you should uh, behave with caution and avoid meddling in their affairs. Oh, boy, am I not going to do that today. Uh, but I was given caution by somebody that uh, I'm going to use the information they shared with me sometime back. And, uh, that's going to roll into next week, too, as well. Remember, you should know a man seven years before you stir his fire. See, these are more rip-off quotes. Your cause may come to easy to you. Do not grow old and fearful. There's no greater victory, no greater faith than death. But has America fallen? If you don't live a life in service of a greater good, you got to at least die a death in service of a greater good, you know? And I fear that I won't get either a life or a death that means anything. So John Green, the fault in our stars, is that guide us? Is it fate or choice? I don't know. It's a stranger in a strange land. William Shakespeare, he says, uh, first thing we do is kill all the lawyers. I thought he said hang them, but anyways... It's a murder of crows in the only game in town. It's uh, in a pig's eye uh, the whole time. Right there under your noses. Oh, ye gods and little fishes. When will these torturous days end? In the scarlet letter, the minister feels his guilt and hypocrisy even more. He compares his silence with her public confession and realizes how his hidden guilt is tormenting him. This torture has led to insanity and the internal alienation from the good and true of which madness is perhaps the earth, earthly type. <clears throat> this looks a little ill in my preview here. I hope I got this right and updated here. It looks like it's scrambled. But this is the, uh, the lion, the fox, and the ass. Scratch my back and I won't scratch your eyes out, says the dead-eyed gray man. And again, all these references you can find it back here in the uh, Real Liberty Media blog page for the radio log. A lion hunted with any others. When it came time to divide the spoils, the lion killed those who attempted to divide things evenly. The fox learned and lived. Happy is a man who learns from the misfortune of others. Whom do we stomp on today? We've hit the magic time in life when nobody really cares in unison. Silence. Thanks, Mr. Wu. You know who. <laughs> My friend right here. So I'm being anonymous today uh, in request from a certain individual and just because in others. But this is a fact-finding mission for a just war. It's in progress. It is indeed. Let me pause the progress. <clears throat> cool, clear water. <clears throat> <clears throat> I should have hit the cough button for that one. Pardon me. The road not taken, and I did not. Uh, 
I did pause there and reflection of wretched afflictions. There ain't no foil. Fo <laughs> there ain't no foil. Foil. Yes, wrap about the tin foil hat and foil. There ain't no fool without toil and trouble. Sheep spend their whole lives living in fear of the wolf, only to be eaten by the shepherd. It's a sheepocalypse. Non anonymous. Non anonymous. Thanks, Beth. Uh, I pulled that together. Whew. We seem to come to death in a duel. For some, anyways, that standoff can get dangerous. I will go back. I'm going to back up and open this up. I just want to do. My mom, she when I was a little kid, she would she would say this this nursery rhyme. There's so much more to it. I could read all of this here, but it's in the uh, uh, blog here. It's uh, so to Shakespeare.com, anyways. Let me go down to it. I'll go round about the cold and go in the poison entrails throw. Toad that utter cold stone, days and nights has thirty one. Sweltered venom, sleeping got, boil thou first in the charming pot. Double, double toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble. Filet of finny snake, in the cauldron boil and bake. I have newton to a frog, will a bat and tongue a dog. Adder's fork and blind worm sting, lizard's leg and owlet's wing. Through charm of powerful trouble, like a hell broth boil and bubble, double, double toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble, skill a dragon, tooth of wolf, which is mummy, maw and gulf, of the raven, sea salt shark, root of hemlocks, thicker and the dark, liver of blasphemy Jew, gall of goat and slip of you, silvered in the moon's eclipse. Nose of Turk, nose of Turk, in Tartar's lips, finger of birth strangled babe, tits delivered by a drab, make the gruel thick and slab, and there to a tiger's cauldron, for the ingredients of our cauldron, double, double toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble, cool it with the baboon's blood, then the charm is firm and good. That's kind of scary, but oh, how does this fit in today's broadcast? French, yes, there is a crazy French out there. Well, so my <laughs> LOL, indeed. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me while I laugh at myself just a little bit. <laughs> Close the tab. Um. And for that right there, I have to have, uh, of course, uh, the funeral march of a marionette in the death of a duel. And I shall play that. And I don't think, uh, well, we're not going to give YouTube the satisfaction, Grimner. We'll just let this go in there so that they don't come strike us. But this is an old, uh, well, let's listen because I think it's cool, pretty cool. <laughs> Composed by uh, Charles Gounod in 1818 to 1893, uh, 90, yes, 1893, and arranged by Jason Waldron. Uh, here's Jason Daniel. That's his YouTube. Uh, he's got only 63 
subscribers, but that has almost 18,000 views. Uh, nice pick and, and nice fingers there, fella. And uh, I read down there through some of the comments that somebody complimented him, and he uh, had said he don't really get on here much. And so this thing is from well, way back in 2008 that he posted that on there. So his comment was like from 10 or 12 years ago even, I believe it was. Uh, let me come back over here and say hi. Oh, that, yeah, I should have said that was mine, Frumpy. <laughs> Ah, uh, that would have that would have been no, that would have been beyond being the paraphrased plagiarist. That would have been a straight on rip off. But no. <laughs> Where am I at? Yeah, it's almost four twenty, I do know that. Somewhere. Uh, I knew this was gonna be a quick broadcast today, but I still got more to go. Um I do, I do. Before I even come up to uh, any sunrise or sunset, uh, be it a song for two humans, that was from 1927. It was uh, another time that that uh, uh, particular arrangement was uh, used. It was a 1927 silent directed by F.W. Murnau. Also, habeas corpus, which is so relevant uh, in this uh, pursuit of American dissonance. And it was also a silent film from 1928 with Laurel and Hardy. So right here at the R-Log, there's all kinds of links here. You can just all go to the extras here. And again, welcome danger. One more time. But a foolish peace is more destructive than a bloody war, isn't it? There was a time when the sheep were so hardy as to wage war with the wolves. So long as they had the dogs for their allies... They were upon all encounters at least a match for their enemies. Upon this consideration, the wolves sent their ambassadors to the sheep to treat about a peace. And in the meantime, there were hostages given on both sides, the dogs on the part of the sheep and the wolves' whelps on the other part, till matters might be brought to an issue. While, they're there, while, <coughs> while they were there upon treaty, the whelps fell a howling. The wolves cried out, Treason! And pretending an infraction and abuse of their hostages, they fell upon the sheep immediately without their dogs and made them pay for their improvidence of leaving themselves without guard. Hmm. Everyone has a point, even if you don't get it from that movie. Thanks, Donna. I say this, as I said before, you are what you do, not what you say you'll do. And be the media. Take back your future. Journalism needs truth. Truth needs defense. Be the media. This is going to come in here. I only got one really uh, so far. I need to go back and add, which I think I've got them. Uh, let me come back and see what Grimner said. I, I've got more to add here in the end of the blog, but I've got them in open. And I'm going to be talking about Pete Santilli. Uh, a fool's play um, and my interaction with him let's see what did you say where 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 what happened Grimner I seen it oh there it is you may have seen Vinny as a child <laughs> sitting on the porch picking in the movie Deliverance <laughs> Moose Girl said that was him <laughs> eh well, question mark she's very close to Canada eh <laughs> nice as got you tune. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon me while I don't laugh at myself. Now, where was I? Oh, yeah. That's right. <clears throat> I probably should have been taking a drink of water because this is going to be a mouthful. I'm going to tell you. So, maybe in anonymity. Because, but I'm, I'm so public, everybody sees it. But, uh, yeah, jerky boy, uh, piggy Pete. <laughs> Stop. Hold on. <laughs> Let me open this up. I want you all to look at this with me, okay? I want you to look. Hold on. I got to open it. And then I'm going to bring it back. Now, if you're listening downstream, you'll have to come back for that. Uh, or you can, yeah, go right over and find it. While everybody else is <coughs> actually waiting. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, that can come in. Uh, I did it. Buttons. I tell you, buttons. There. 
private label jerky. Jerky up. Jerky up, jerky boy. <laughs> I don't know if y'all need to see this right now listening live. Anyways, yeah. Uh, your private label jerky. Now, where's Pete at in all this? Where are you at, Pete? Yeah, well, this is for... Um, I, I was talking to the doctor today, and I said, you know, there has to be accountability uh, and the test that come with that, that, that uh, do that. Wait a minute. No, wait a minute. Where was I? Over here. This is, uh, I'll say, uh, Earth Stumper. Thanks. Okay, I'm going to have to. There it is. There it is. Anybody buy this? And now I'll open that up. Hold on. Anybody buy this? And then I'm going to tell you what I heard and what I said anyways. PistolPeteJerky.com It's delicious American beef jerky. Yeehaw! <laughs> Major announcement. There we go. We've got some of them. Uh, those are these cattle you'll see here. And I actually want to bring this over to you and so listen in here. Oh, we missed the 420 report. Just, uh, y'all come over here listening live. You can take a look at this. There's one post. Let me come over and post it over here. In the other. Do, 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 do. Now, where you are, jerky boy? Jerky, jerky, jerky boy. <laughs> There he is, and he's got him, and uh, Clive and Bundy out there. He does, I believe, that in that right-hand pocket. He's got a pocket constitution. And there's them cattle he is out there in the desert. And I want you to very, it's very important, I want you to take a look at those cattle out there and the environment that they live in and think for one minute and tell me, and I'm going to come back to this too. This is a add-on and a, and a primer for next week's broadcast also. Bundy Beef Jerky is coming soon. I think the jerk's already here. Pistol Peach Jerky is proud to announce that Nevada rancher Clive and Bundy will bring his famous Bundy Beef to market exclusively through Pistol Peach Jerky. It will have its own brand name, signature flavor, and available only through Pistol Peach Jerky. Uh, yeah. I got a new name for him. Uh, anyways, read on there as you will. But, I gotta wonder how much he's ripping off. How much is what he said in the past is he not saying now. Now, with that being said, I'm gonna back up for a moment and go here and thank you to this person who uh, I've communicated with over the time that does not want me to to mention their name because of uh, people like Pete, he's a jerk. You know, he may come for after me for this. He's uh, he's 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 uh, yeah that. Well, let me just open this up so I can read it. It's a uh, it's clipped <clears throat> screenshot. Uh, I bet it's I received it back in 2018. Peter Thomas Santilli. There's a platform here, says he, <clears throat> and the light has come on after reading Ammon Bundy's full reply. He has become so obsessed with building his cult, his cult following, following that he has now resorted to using his charisma to get everyone to believe that I lied, putting his family in danger, and that uh, he's that. I'm just going to use first person reading for him. And that I set Mel Bundy, the family, up by taking him to talk to the BLM. Every bit of that is not true. Ammon has either become psyoped by these radicals uh, or he's leading them as members of his army of thugs who will show up and take over the next bird farm. That's in reference to the Malia Refuge of uh, that Harney County Resource Center, as it was uh, Known for a short time. The next, <coughs> uh, yeah, take over the next bird farm. The next time these lawless terrorists show up and take over bird farms, etc., 
out of frustration because they failed to correct the system the right way. I will state it here right out in the open. I will rally the American people to... And there's where it's cut off. <clears throat> Pardon moi. <clears throat> I can say that because I speak in French earlier. Parlez-vous français? Yes, it's the paraphrase, paraphrase plagiarist. Mon crayon est grand. Yes, my pencil is big. And I'm so glad. <laughs> Sarcasm emphasized. Again from Pete Centilli. I'm so glad that I have given Ammon Bundy and his band of wingnut domestic terrorists a platform to spew the radical ideologies on a propaganda medium for the purpose of recruiting gunmen. Good luck to you, Ammon, never again. Yeah, that was back in 2018. And there we find old Pete out there trying to propagate his Bundy beef. Jerky boy. All right, let me go back over to Twitter and this. And uh, their stomper had said, Did anybody buy this? And I said, Not me. Pete's a pig. You should hear how he and Deb trashed the place someone let them stay in. This is not uh, me. Uh, uh, I went firsthand. Now, I have heard this from a reliable source. Again, this is anonymous day, so I ain't going to say who said it to me, but that's what I heard. Uh, sue that, Pete, you pig. <laughs> Piggy Pete. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's a nursery, nursery rhyme in there somewhere for that boy. Oh, yeah. But I would doubt the quality of their product. Yeah, the quality control. The beef on the hand, the other hand, Bundy beef. Yup. Yum, yum, and range free. I've had the chance of eating Bundy beef myself out there. Uh, sit up to the table with Cliven. Had beef and beans and I believe we had some cornbread to go with it. There not no glass of buttermilk, I remember. I was thinking, boy, this would go real good with a glass of buttermilk, I thought. <laughs> I asked him, I said, is this here Bundy beef in here? And he said, well, the first beef in there it is. Sure enough. Well, the earth stomper said the link takes you to a web page, the one that's uh, in the radio log blog here. That, uh, And there's no mention of Bundy beef. He used that to scam sales. Still a fraud. I think she's right. I, I jerky up. Let me go see Grimmer's talking to me. Uh, dum thumb. One drinking buttermilk. He says nasty. <laughs> okay, why? Well, <I'm, coughs> excuse me. Easily, easily. Pete Santilli. I'm sorry, Chloe. Pete Santilli. Let's do a, a Google on that. Can we do that? Uh, over here in, in your room. He's a big figure. Uh, but uh, honestly, it is... Uh, wait. I call him Patilli. <laughs> Patilli. Thank you, Chloe. Uh, Patilli Brad. <laughs> He's a pig. Uh, there you go. That's him right there. Uh... From 2016, charges were dismissed against Peter Santilli, an internet radio host who broadcast live from the Malheur National Wildlife Refuge during. So that he was also charged in Nevada. Uh, he copped a plea there, um, and perhaps uh, in future agreement to testify. That's that's my experience of what I've learned in uh, how that stuff works in the federal courts. Uh, so again, this is a good tie-in for next week. Next week, which will be for the uh, seven-year anniversary of the uh, Bundy Ranch standoff. Uh, yes, where was I? Back over here on Santilli. I also have video uh, of him uh, where I was at there in 2014, and I think I'll go over to that in just a minute. I, I think I ran through this. Thanks for uh, stumping the earth, there, girl. She's the ant. She's the anti Bundy from the anti Bundy uh, group of folks that I follow on Twitter, um, and I'm very glad for the engagement. You know, a lot of people don't know how to tag me, uh, and thankfully there are those that uh, are willing to engage in conversation. Um, yeah, I'm often misconstrued, I reckon, because uh, seem to be all over the place. 
And I, I think uh, truth matters. And uh, when people speak that is not truth, then I, I think the, the light will, will shine and, and make that evident at some point anyways. So guard your words. I'm not doing it today. Not so much. In the last what couple of broadcasts, I, I throw the F word in there. Normally, I do like to avoid that, and that will call me back um, to uh, my my Facebook page. And if I can find that quick enough, I think this needs to be included because uh, the words kind of uh, hit home with me. Uh, I normally, like I said, well, so I was telling this doctor today <laughs> about words. Guard your words. Well, how am I identified? That's a long story. But a lot of people don't have the same definitions. Uh, hey, here's a, here's a shout out. Shout out to the Sacred Agua. Harry, Donna. Uh, let me close this window. So this is a limited time offer in a, uh, about, I love it, 4321. I survived another apocalypse, but all I got was this shirt. Limited time offer at uh, sales for this close is Sunday. Don't get fooled again. Flaunt to the fates how you managed to survive despite some flimsy doomsday prophecy. Get it before it's too late. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps second only to Joe Biden, one of our country's most articulate presidents, once said, there's an old saying in Tennessee. Uh, I, I know it's in Texas, uh, probably in probably in Tennessee. It says, uh, "Fool me once, shame on, uh, shame on you. Uh, fool, fool me. Uh, you can't get fooled again." G W. <laughs> oh, I tell you. Well, hey, yesterday. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, this today's broadcast is the part of the April Fools. Celebration, Pistol P, you fool, you. Uh, yesterday, ah, <laughs> uh, I posted that Biden is the best president ever. <laughs> that drew several comments, and most reactions were the ha ha. <laughs> Bill, he give me a wow. He said, "Wow." <laughs> Thought I went off on the deep, deep end. Well, what am I doing? It's kind of part of the theme today of uh, president. Precedent said president. You know the the words that you speak. It's not what you say you'll do, but what you do. When you can't run for president, walk. That was a that was a picture I posted on Facebook yesterday. Victory over oppression. There I was, but. I had doctor's appointments all this week, three days anyways. But anyways, yesterday was going in for my foot. Yeah, my foot, I blistered in Tennessee and wouldn't care, but I put another blister on my foot that game. So I had to go check that out and just added some padding. I'm getting messaged over here, but I can't stop to look right now. But that's a picture of me. It said, Vincent Walker. Uh, somebody graffitied the big rock out there, but... Yeah, Vincent, me, Walker. Yeah, not so much walking right now with a hobbled foot. I'd gone the day before for new shoes, and uh, then I thought I was going to get my hoof trimmed the next day. Normally, you get you trim the hoof, and then you get shod, but there, there I was. Uh, well, hey, hey, there's my niece. Hey, Hannah, if you're on my Facebook page, you can see that. Um Vanity Beauty Boutique in Las Vegas. Yeah, my niece. And she's got a baby girl, too. And I'm a great uncle. Um, here it is. And I read this earlier, so in the broadcast. Uh, sheep spend their whole lives living in fear of the wolf, only be de to be eaten by the shepherd. There is a lot, uh, lot to be said about that. And... Um, I think I got it on the blog page there where you can click back into what I'd read earlier about how they, uh, let's see here. You get vaxxed while you're there. No, no vaccines. 
And, I, and I'll stop right here then in this perfect time to uh, interject this. So the doctor comes in and takes off his mask. He says, I hope you don't mind I don't wear a mask. I said, good for me. Now, I've not worn a mask throughout this whole deal. I uh, When I go to the doctor, uh, see, I saw him. He's the main doctor there. And normally I see a uh, nurse practitioner which is like I wouldn't trade her for six or eight doctors, honestly, great. But anyways, uh, I wear a mask there for uh, a courtesy to them. Uh, today, I, I wore a, a flapper. I take the, the paper mask and cut the uh, string and tie it together. And, uh, it's not pulled around behind my ears, just around my head there and just flaps, and I can breathe just fine, and any exhaling is not directly sprayed at anybody. So that's the uh, that's the only time I make accommodation for that, and I don't have a problem doing that. Now he was he was comfortable, as was the eye doctor I went to uh, before. Uh, I said, "You good with no mask?" He says, "I'm good." And so uh, I think more and more people are seeing that the mask is this mandate is is ridiculous. That's more a topic for another another broadcast. As I wandered off, where was I? Oh yeah, back over here. Uh, da -da. Wait, wrong one. Back over here. Yes. Oh, yeah. I was looking in this. Um, I think this is good to include. Uh, Julia commented and, and added uh, quite a bit on this. There's a lot of comments in this thread. Several, anyways, and, and uh, an important look at, at different aspect, aspects of. Who this uh, shepherd, who the sheep are, who the wolf is. Um, without reading in, I'm going to stop here and just reflect a little bit. So, sheep. Well, some of us are black sheep, right? We don't really even fit in. We aren't even afraid of the big bad wolf. Uh, you know, we could go tell the, the pig <laughs> a thing or two. About not being followers, yeah, the pig, pig to Pete, Pete the pig, uh, you're getting picked on today. That's right. Uh, it's the fool's play. I, I think I'll come back to you in a minute. Um, who else? Yeah, the wolf. Who is the wolf? I mean, the wolf is. Uh, some might consider themselves the wolves. The uh, being a protector of the environment in so many senses, where they fit in. Others might see the wolf as the uh, a guardian as well. Um, maybe the sheep and the wolves did exist at one time. Maybe the wolf ate grass. And who is the shepherd? Well, as an anarchist, I would say that the perceived the shepherd is the government. And yeah, they're eating us up. All, and all that they do. The uh, the government is is not doing what the it had been intended to do. Julia says, "I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep." He this is what we should be seeing as people that uh, are supposed to be statesmen. Of course, this has the uh, the aspect of uh, uh, reflect upon uh, that of Jesus Christ and her being a Christian. Uh, and I think it's an important example to share that uh, demonstrated by uh, as the way to be. He he who is a hired hand and not a shepherd who doesn't own the sheep sees the wolf coming, leaves the sheep and flees. The wolf snatches the sheep and scatters them. The hired hand flees because he's a hired hand and doesn't care for the sheep. Is this ringing true in everyday life? I am the good shepherd. I know my way. And I'm known by my own, even as the, as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep when they're not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will hear my, hear my voice. They will become one flock with one shepherd. Therefore the Father loves me because I lay down my life, that I may take it again. No one takes it away from me, but I lay it down by myself. And I have power to lay it down. I have power to take it up again. I have received this commandment from my Father. There's a whole lot more. If you're on Facebook, come over and read all that uh, all these. 
maybe I should include a few more because they're so good. But uh, Julie had a lot more to say. Jan from Down Under, she says, uh, just like the wolf being in charge of the chickens. Mama Bear. Ah, LOL. Sheep kill the sheep dog and wonder what happened. That's more of a... Um, I think of more of a reflection more towards uh, people as militia uh, and how I take that. Donna, uh friend of uh, uh, Tom LaCavar, sounds sounds like what is going on today, so afraid of a disease worth a, uh, a high sur with us, it says worth, with a high survival rate. Sheeple are lining up for untested vaccine. More from Julie, a lot from Julie. And let's see. Is there a more, more, more? More, more, more. That was most of it. Most of it. And I'm going to finish off there at uh, nowhere near Paris because of the French, you know, that I was speaking. Probably be Francais. <laughs> well, this, there is a Paris in Texas, by God. And here, I'm sorry. I, I said, that's a habit whenever I say Texas to say that. Hey, it's nowhere near Paris, but the sun also rises and the bulls run in an earnest Hemingway. Deep in the heart of Texas. Oh, wait, I wasn't ready for that. You got to do that after that. Well, that was some fun and with pun from the paraphrase plagiarist. That was a picture back from 2015 I took there. Pretty near to Abilene. People there don't treat you mean, but that was a sunrise in a pretty sky full of uh, <laughs> lingering, persistent chem tra uh, contrails. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> shh, shh. YouTube will get you for saying things like that. They will. Where was I? I was over here talking about Pistol Pete a while ago. Sure enough. Oh. <laughs> Let me just pause for a minute. I got water in that cup. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I believe I've got this uh, keyed up here, queued up at the right time, which is, I think, 6 minutes 36 seconds in if, uh, if I know it. Now, it seems to be maybe 6 is day. I'd have to have a little closer look. But yesterday I had 7s lining up. 7s all... I don't know if you put much account to numbers, but it's just another thing of how things seem to line up. This is uh this is uh gonna be stop that. Let me tell you something. Mr. Bundy, so we don't get sidetracked on this deal. Okay. Can you tell the American people exactly how Harry Reid stands to profit by using the militia called the BLM? Take this land from us, the people that live here in Nevada. I, I might be able to do that, but I wanted to talk about this this here. Now wait a minute, and I'm gonna get this run up here. It should be actually at six thirty-six. I'm at six fifteen. But I'm gonna let play you right. Then I'll come back. And I'll be right back. You don't listen to this. How are you gonna afford that? You're one guy. Well, what I'm saying is, when you got guts enough to do it, get it done. <laughs> Why are you trying to tear us apart when we're trying to bring everybody together? As a Mexican American, you said, what, why, why do you believe that you need to inject Mexican Americanism into your line of questioning? No, it's not about freedom. Freedom. You believe in freedom? No, it's not about freedom. 
obviously heated and uh, people are going to stand divided. And I think that's the whole purpose of this is to uh, cause division. So, as a Mexican American, you should know that we're going to be any interviews go to the Oak Keepers. Is he, is it, is he, uh, Stewart here? Yes, he is. You have my right on. You are not serving the American public. You do not deserve first, even first of all. You hijacked your truth with race. You can take your bias opinion and you can change it. I don't think anybody be, ought to be afraid of asking questions. There's nothing wrong with asking questions. Nothing wrong with asking questions. Thank you, Antonio. I think you did a good job. Antonio Castellan. we got to ask questions, right? got to ask questions. Even if they're not comfortable for you. If you can't uh, if you can't take a question, then maybe you're seeking confirmation bias. Freaking liberal idiot. That works the bias. All right, that's on my personal YouTube channel. That was I filmed that in uh, 2014. That was after the standoff. That was when press turned out. When everybody thought uh, when when Clavin was everybody's darling on the right. You know, the fox and all that. And then uh, somebody thought he was a racist. Uh, so that the uh, here in the radio log, you'll find we are trading one form of slavery for another. Clive and Bundy. So you click on Clive and Bundy's right there, and that'll take you to that video of mine. Um, you'll have to advance to 6 minutes 36 seconds to see Pete Santilli uh, and Screwy Louie in the background. I saw them building up their little stocking motion then, uh, Santilli telling, you have no right to the uh, First Amendment. What kind of fool says that? Uh, I want to tell you about Pete Santilli. Let me tell you what I know about Pete Santilli. And I, I'm going to come over here in the chat room. I'm going to come off the radio blog uh, so I can just look and see. Uh, yeah, uh, Moose Girl, that that was a whole lot of rambling. That was a couple of minutes. That's uh, you've got to be able to sort through it. And there's a lot of uh, uh, to sort out there because what's what's really going on in the background, and that's what I'm doing here in this examination of American dissonance is taking a look in the background. Um, okay. I'm undistracted. Where was I? About Pete Santilli. Yeah. He he uh, he's the one really. I mean, credit where credit is due. Uh, if it wasn't for him and his video where they were uh, putting the dogs and stun guns on uh, Ammon Bundy and kicking the crap out of him, grinding uh, Dave his brother's head into the gravel. Uh, this would have gone a whole lot differently, and there would have been. Some dead folks way out in the middle of the desert, a little desert town, and nobody would have uh, known or ever heard or given a, a two hoots about it. Uh, um, the non-anonymous part, Jaja, Janine Gordon, and um, Suzanne Posel, who uh, I had uh, in my early days of getting into this Internet radio, I had uh, uh, been able to work with both of them, and... I I didn't know who Pete Santilli was, and you know, in passing and in talking to them and where they come from, you know, I learned who Pete Santilli was, and then lo and behold, he's the one who uh, uh, puts this video out that gets uh, thousands of people to rally in the middle of the desert, you know, 80 miles north of Las Vegas, Nevada. That aside, yeah. Uh, on to 2014 there, as uh, a few days later, a week or so later there, on uh, the wee hours of the mornings of uh, April the 14th of 2014, or it might have been the 12th, I think I messed that up, yeah, uh, on the 12th, um, uh, Jason Patrick and I were talking outside the, this trailer up at the Marshland Yard there where all the Patriots and other folks uh, had gathered there and supported the Bungie Ranch. Um, we and I were talking and, and how, 
you know, people come in and troublemakers, the provocateurs and infiltrators and uh, how that we would then want to be uh, on guard and watch for that. Ammon Bundy came out having uh, heard us. We didn't know he was in there, but he was inside the trailer. And we talked then about watching out for these people, passing the word on and, and uh, giving groups and individuals, uh, um, you know, what is that when you pass it down the line? there to uh to give people to be on guard and if they saw anybody like there's a troublemaker that uh uh hey mama bear i was just talking about you sending me a message estimated um okay let me send her my address whoops you can write me as well 416 fawn bluff Da, 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 da. And I'll give you so so you might need the uh, zip just to make it easier. There we go. Four sixteen Fawn Bluff, Clinton, Arkansas seven two zero three one. She's uh, let's see twelve forty five. Oh, she just messaged me. So ETA two hours. Mama Bear is a, a central figure in the Oregon standoff, the Bundy Ranch standoff. I call them standoffs. There's a feds doing the standing off. Um. And I was talking, speaking, you know, interconnections here. Um, and I was talking about Pete. The first time I saw him, I didn't know his face. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I'm looking around that next morning after this conversation with Ammon and Jason. And I'm looking around for that guy. That, that oh boy. I'm trying to be um, F-free today. There he was, looking around, looking almost as suspicious, looking at people as I was looking. And we locked eyes on each other, and I said, that's the guy. That's the instigator. That's the troublemaker. That's the guy infiltrating. There's a lot of stories about Pete Santilli ripping off the, the truckers, uh, getting arrested and released, uh, packing a pistol. Pistol Pete, you know. Um, and more to that. Now, let's see what happened. Uh, running up close to the end, and, and I think I'm pretty close to, uh, I need to go actually, I think, do intro here for, for next week a little bit. Uh, next Friday, I'm going to be talking more about the Bundy Ranch in American Dissonance. Uh, I'm going to have to go to notifications here. Uh, I was, I'm going to tell you about this lady, this writer, and I've I've got her book that I found in audio, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to order that and listen to it. <clears throat> Let me scroll here just a little bit. I had some good interactions. Um, let me click on her and hang Betsy Gaines. Quammen, uh on on Twitter. So I've been following her. She's a writer. Uh she wrote American Zion and that's the book I'm gonna be uh um listening to. I'm also in a uh pre read of a book from uh my Mike uh uh sorry I'm reading Strickland. <laughs> Strickland Stickler. <laughs> Stickler in a Strickland. Yes, Mike Stickler. Um Back to, I'm sorry, Betsy Gaines, Quammen. Uh, writer, American Zion at Tory House 2020. She loves public, she loves uh, wildlife, public land, science, history, social justice in the West. Uh, she says she studies agitation and stuff, dog mom, PhD, uh, BLM, Black Lives Matter, and not the Bureau of Land Management, which that was originally assigned to that hashtag. Close out of the way. Uh, she's doing another book, bet, by the way. Uh, she's uh, signed contract back in 2020, September, uh, about science and anti-science. So uh, I look forward more to following her. Now, I guess I need to back up. We had a little interaction. I, I uh, Let's see. 
Uh, okay, she says to me, thanks, I haven't heard it. This is about the uh, audio book. She says she hadn't heard it yet, but uh, she heard the narrator mispronounces some terminology, which is super annoying, so sorry for that in advance. Uh, but yes, I look forward to that. I'm backing up. Uh, let's see if this will open to where I want it to be. Uh, and like I said, this is precursor anyways. I told her that... Let me see here, because I have to do it one more time. Yeah, hit piece, she said. I was so careful about... She said she was so careful. This is about Ammon's understanding. Uh, in an article she wrote. I read it. Um, there would be only a couple of words there that I would say that... Uh, um, somebody might try to capture and use that as saying it's a hit piece. But I, I found it the article to be clear and concise. Uh, I would like to see more background in the cause of their dissonance, that is, of the Bundy, specifically the environmental assertion of harm to the tortoise by cattle, and uh, therefore the reason for rescinding grazing rights. Uh, and then she tells me that she wrote a book. I, uh, I'll leave it there. Because that's going to come back into next week's. So I haven't titled it yet, but it is going to be about the Bundy Ranch. Um, winding out the hour. I, I thought I'd fall short, but uh, as usual, I can uh, mumble for a while. Um, I guess I lost a couple of the listeners there <laughs> with the with the uh, jumbled all the people talking. Yeah, you got to hear the you got to hear the roar through the crowd. I mean, if you can't do that, then you you don't have a lot of hope of figuring your way through this anyways. Um, so if I just insulted you, you probably didn't even hear me anyways. <laughs> Take that, you non-listener. <laughs> I think I'm going to go stop this and push a button. And uh, I think I've got to go play out the the what I introed with the outro. Do, 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 do. Let me go find that. That's not it. That's the one I used. This one. Uh, there it is. Perfect. See if I can. I better go. Uh, no, nah, maybe I can work it faster though. No, I better stop. Stop. I was trying to stop. I'm looking forward to getting that uh, intro from uh, Doc Mike, the redneck dentist. He's on tomorrow at uh, 5 Eastern, all times Eastern. At noon, we've got Grimner with the blues, and we're playing trivia here at rlmradio.xyz. If you got fast fingers and uh, you're not uh, uh, scared to use them, come on over and uh, let your fingers do your talking as we play around the trivia, building up, waiting for... Uh, some of that can of whoop ass at Hal Anthony behind the woodshed, 3 p.m. Eastern. Monday, we're back at uh, Free Your Mind with, no, no, it's all connected. I'm sorry. It's all connected with Grimner, Grimner and Circle at uh, 2 p.m. 2 p.m. Eastern. Thursday, Grimner comes with Moose Girl on Free Your Mind, and that is at 7 p.m. Eastern. And I'm back again at noon central, 1 p.m. Eastern with uh, the second half. On the downward swing of American dissonance and uh, kind of building up uh, for the finale. Uh, roll right along. Thanks for listening here at reallibertymedia.com. And uh, we'll take you out with a little Sandman as I go push the stop button on this broadcast. See you next week.